Before creating our mesh, let's look at the overall dimensions of our gear. For this on the top left corner, we'll use the box measurement tool. Select box and then the body we want to measure. Here we can see our smallest dimension of almost 200 millimeters. To close the box measuring tool, hit escape on your keyboard. Now we can quickly generate the solid mesh on the gear. For this, let's go to the mesh ribbon here. Then to Tet Mesh. Set the value you want to as the average element size. For this first, let's use 25 millimeters. We also will change the quality criteria to stretch. We recommend using stretch if you're doing any type of structural solution. Then hit OK. Let's review our meshed model. We can see some big elements created and some smaller ones depending on the type of detail. Let's say we are not really satisfied with this meshed model because of these really big elements right here. We want to refine it a little bit more. For this, let's go back to the TET mesher and set the new value for the element size. Let's hide first the meshed model and show the original geometry and create the mesh from the original one. Set the average element size to 20 millimeters and hit OK. It will ask if we want to replace the previous meshed model or if we want to create a new one. In this case, we want to replace it with the new averaged element size mesh. We can review our model again. You can see there are no longer big elements as before, but visualizing our cylindrical faces, we see they're not greatly created, as the elements are too coarse to create them. So, we want to generate another more refined mesh for it, but we don't want to replace this mesh. Important if you want to make mesh studies or comparison. To do this, let's hide again our mesh body and show our geometry. Open the TET mesh tool and set the new average element size to 5 millimeters. And let's leave identify feature enabled. Then OK. Set create the mesh in a new model. This will take some time as we're doing quite a refined mesh. We can look at our new mesh body. We can see quite a few differences to our previous one. Take a look on some of our cylindrical faces. We see they're properly created. Let's make our last comparison disabling the Identify Features option. Let's hide again our refined mesh and show our original geometry. Open the TET mesher and disable Identify Feature option. Select our geometry and OK. Create the new mesh model to compare it. Let's make a quick comparison between our two meshes. The first difference between them is how the elements are created. Not using the Identify Features option will create better element quality. Let's compare this on our fillets. Here you can see better elements as equilateral triangles. Hide this mesh and visualize the model with Identify Features enabled. We can see better resolution on fillets with a mapped mesh structure with right triangles. When to use which one? We recommend having better elements quality when doing fluid analysis and using identify features when doing structural analysis. Another difference is the number of nodes or elements created. To verify how many elements and nodes your model has, select your assembly, right click and open details. We can look at the amount of nodes, for example. This model has almost 66,000 nodes created. If we compare it to our other model, we can see it creates around 87,000 nodes. Using the Identify feature will also help to decrease the number of nodes created.